Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Thompson. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, a lot of people ask magicians how they get started, and uh, my real first interest was uh, doing uh, card cheating. I saw a, a motion picture called Mississippi Riverboat with Tyrone Power, and I saw the Derringer hat and the frock coat and the brocade vest, and I said, that's what I want to be, is a card cheater. So uh, at eight years old, I ran out and bought a book called Expert at the Card Table. And I spent four years learning everything in the book and came to the rude awakening. There weren't too many places for a 12-year-old card cheater to work. <laughs> so I decided then and there to do magic. But that's my grassroots. And every time you take a deck of cards out, generally, there's someone in the audience, if it's a lady, she'll say, would you read my fortune? The men all want to know how to win at cards. What I'm going to do for you will encompass every every facet of gambling uh, from the card cheater standpoint that you can ever see. Now, I'm not going to explain how it's done, but you will see how you can get cheated at a game. To make it interesting, a dear friend of mine many years ago wrote and dedicated a ballad to me, and I'm going to perform the ballad and, and perform the card tricks at the same time. Not actually card tricks, cheating at cards. Now, so that the audience, and, and you around me and the audience at home, understand some of the jargon of the card cheat, I'm going to explain some of the things you will hear in the ballad. For instance, you're going to hear the term tossing the broads. That is an antiquated term for three-card Monty, wherein they take three cards and throw them around and you try to guess the red card between the black. The reason they called it tossing the broads is not because traditionally it used a queen, but because of the width of these cards. At the turn of the century, poker-sized cards were called broads, and uh, the narrow or bridge-sized cards as we know them were called narrows. So tossing the broads, the extra 3 16th of an inch difference in the cards afforded you the, the cover that was needed to perform the sleight of hand. Another term you'll hear is bucking the tiger, and that's another name for Pharaoh Bank, which was the game they played in the Old West. It's no longer played because it was a game that cost the house more money than it ever cost the players. So consequently, it's <laughs> been uh, washed out of the scene altogether. But they used to hang a tiger's head in front of a saloon so that uh, because the literacy rate was so low in the Old West, if someone saw a tiger's head, they knew they could go in and play Faro Bank without having to read. Another term you'll hear is bottoms. That means dealing cards from the bottom of the deck as a, and making it look as though they come from the top. Uh, also, you're going to hear uh, of a crimp, which is a bend in a card, or it could be a bend in half the deck. Or sometimes they would bend one half the deck concave, the other half convex. And if you sat down, you would cut. Without thinking, you would cut into where both, both of the bends met. So they could put the deck in the order they wanted it to deal the cards out. Uh, you'll also hear the term a whole card switch. That happens to be the down card in a poker game of stud poker or in blackjack. It's the one card you could switch because you only see the back, and the backs, of course, all look alike without anyone knowing it. And the last thing you should know about is uh, I covered a crimp and a whole card switch. It's a holdout, which is a machine that looks like lazy tongs that's hidden up in the sleeve of the coat and moves on out and puts cards in someone's hand or takes cards away. Now, that's all the terms. This takes place at the turn of the century when the last of the river boats was put into dry dock. It happens in a saloon called Jake's Saloon. This is called the Gambler's Ballad or an Incident in Jake's Saloon by a gentleman by the name of Milan Bulovic. One afternoon in Jake's Saloon, gamblers were in the back, a breed of men in a smoky den, all with a losing knack. For three straight days, they made their plays, warily betting their dough, until there came that final game, and the slickers measured blow. It told on their faces, a spread of aces took every buck they had. And back of the chips, with grinning lips, sat the slicker, just a lad. The brim of his hat hid eyes of a cat, his skill by some demon sent, cleaning out gentry with slights elementary, leaving them luck to lament. By the breaking dawn, the players were gone. The slicker alone in his chair was turning up aces in peculiar places and fanning the deck with flair. Beyond the glow of the lamp like low, a voice to the slicker said, Listen, my son, although you've won, ne'er to these cards be wed. Someday he'll come, that sharpie dumb, when stakes in life are high. Then bet what you will on infallible skill. His fingers will faster fly. With a sudden stroke, he'll leave you broke, ruined where you sit. A better master, dealing disaster, stacking folly in your mitt. Uh, 
old am I, now dim of I, no longer fit for the game, but I've been on top with the best of the lot and wagered my way to fame. When I was young, if one ladder's rung, I, I cleave to cards and dice, to lady luck and her easy buck and her bosom made of ice. I spent my youth with rogues and couth, yet mingled with millionaires. But I stuck to the men with a gambling yen, learning to deal bottoms in pairs. Before you were born, I heard the horn of the Natchez on a run, where the, where the best of boys maneuvered ploys, and every trick known was done. I remember well that lifelong spell, that uh, steamboat of my past, where spinning wheels and double deals told the world of our caste. We tossed the broads and tossed the talked of frauds on that floating city of chance, giving odds on a fighter, bucking the tiger, living our lives in a trance. Rosed up ladies bound for Hades. Now they shilled their way to my heart, fluttering lashes on the decks of the Natchez, plying treachery into an art. Uh, Sir Conrad Conti, now he threw three-card Monty. There was a man of precision, dropping that queen deftly between, making a mockery of vision. Came Dandy Lee with a rolling pea, imploring where it went, doing it slow just for the show, baiting a sporting gent. There was a, there was a, a Mickey the Lame of Farrell fame and Lopez from the Rio Grande, Frisco Pete of the Bays Elite and Duke with a velvet hand. Old, uh, old Nifty Ned, his Confederate red, that tricky mechanic shed, Deacon Dan, the blackjack man. And of course, the mysterious kid. They were all aboard by the devil adored, the Natchez with anchors away, floating downstream on moonlit beam, her tables all in play. In the Grand Salon, a game was on a crowd like never before. The stakes were high, then by and by, the players they dwindled to four. Across from me, a stranger be, a man of my profession, on either side, drunk with pride, two moguls with obsession. The timber tycoon was wiped out soon. In tow, a cattle king. Then a thousand head went in the red on a suicidal fling. Betting like crazy with logic hazy, scribbling his name on a note, till nothing remained but a loss that pained and the regret of all he wrote. One more deal made him real. He was frantic to recover. But I brought him down and took his crown by means he couldn't discover. With fortune and mass, there came at last my, my solo with a stranger. That final run where only one survives a pending danger. I gauged him keen, trying to glean the merit of his skill, weighing the risk, rippling brisk, setting him for the kill, with gloved hand limp. <laughs> he cut, he cut to my crimp. This stranger I overrated. The game was draw without a flaw, I dealt the cards elated. Beneath my thumb, the rhythmic hum was sounding his defeat. To myself, a deuce, which would reproduce and make my hand complete. With far of a kind, I didn't mind my rival's haughty air, his marble face, his icy grace, I'd sentenced to despair. The moment arrived, I, I feigningly sighed and and called in winning style. Then leaning to me in eerie glee, he put his hand upon the pile. In a frozen hush, a royal flush was spread for all to see. That mysterious kid, by holdout hid, made this derelict of me. So my son, uh, there's, there's always one who'll come along your way. At rainbow's end, he'll heaven bend to make your blackest day. Now, the old man's story of gambling glory, whether it fact or fable, fell on an ear that didn't hear the wisdom nor its label. The slicker sitting, his boredom knitting, by spreading a fancier fan, mulled the chatter of bygone matter and said to the aged man, Well, old timer, Perhaps there's primer in your, uh, your windbag of palaver. Or a whiskey leaning has you dreaming on that there uh, last rung of your ladder. If you had a stake, I'd give you a break and have you a game that's real. Then you could tell how you once fell 
to the world's greatest deal. Now, the old man's face showed no trace of the insolence just spoken, but with an urge he couldn't purge, he revealed a shiny token. All right, Sonny, I, I have no money to pit against your coffer, but this diamond pure can well procure that greatest deal you offer. Tis the very ring the cattle king lost to the game that night. A precious rock I'd never hock, no matter what the flight. Yet I'll, I'll match this stone if you be prone against what's on the table. And in the ride, let luck decide just who's better able. Smitten by the jewel, now pawn for duel, glistening on the table's green, the slicker cut deep in the squared off heap. And with a flourish, he turned a queen. Now, O Bard, match that card, and you beat the best in town. Then nonchalantly he gallantly tossed the queen face down. The old man nodded by the lingo prodded, stating, I'll do even more. I'll, I'll, I'll find you three in a cutting spree and make the total four. In rapid succession, by luck or deception, he cut the deck in thirds. And on every pile in regal style lay the promise of his words. On the right, a stunning sight, the portrait of a queen. To the left, neatly cleft, a second in the scheme. In the center, too, without a clue, the last of the ladies was there. Then over she went toward the other scent, placed face down with care. The promise breached, the old man reached for his jewel and all he'd won, but the slicker fast made a grasp on the move as it was done. Wait, old dad, your eyes are bad. Look again and see my king. With a whole card switch, he made his pitch for the clutched and wagered ring. The old man's smile held deadly guile. His silence told the story. The slicker enraged, his mark misgaged, had lost to captured quarry. He overturned the cards concerned and glared at what he feared. By ledger domain, now kings held reign. The queens had disappeared. The old man rose and stately posed, and turning a jaunty heel, he bid farewell to the one who fell to the world's greatest deal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.